In this video, I'll be doing part one of a two-part time-lapse demonstration for this lion piece that I've done in acrylic paint on 12 by 12 inch canvas board. In this part, I'll be showing you how I've done the underpainting portion for this piece. So whenever I do an underpainting for a piece, I'm always working from dark to light. So I'm laying down my darkest values first. I start with my blacks and I work my way up to white. So here you can see that I'm starting to map out my blacks. I'm going around the eyes, the nose, the mouth, working in the mane with black. And also during my underpaintings, I'm focused on detail, but at the same time, not hyper-focused on detail, meaning I'm just trying to get, when I'm doing an animal, I'm trying to map out the direction of the fur, I'm trying to get the values in place. I'm not super focused on details because I'm going to end up painting over it in other colors later. So a lot of this will kind of get covered up, but some of it will show through. So very gradually, after I've put in all of my darkest values, usually black, I will start adding a color to the black. I usually do a monochromatic underpainting. So in this case, I'm doing a red underpainting. So I'm slowly adding red to my black to kind of increase the brightness as I'm working my way up to white. So I've added red to my black, starting to fill in the slightly lighter values that aren't quite black, and then I will eventually work my way all the way up to pure white. Another thing about the way that I like to work my underpaintings is I really do spend a long time on them because I find that the longer I spend on my underpaintings, the easier it all comes together once I start adding the other colors on top. So the more detail I have packed into my underpainting, the less I have to do in order to bring out detail when I'm starting to add in my second layer, uh, which is the actual color. So my monochromatic underpainting is usually sufficient as a standalone piece if I were to just leave it at that. And that's kind of where I try to be whenever I'm doing an underpainting. I try to get my underpainting to look just as good as I would have if it were going to be a completed piece. And now I'm also starting to go in around the background. I decided for this background I wanted very high contrast painting in general. So I decided to do pure black for the background. I'm using Mars Black, which is my favorite black to use. I use it more than any other black, honestly, because it's such a rich, warm black, very opaque. So I've added in my medium reds and I'm starting to add white to my red so that I can build up the highlights for the underpainting. So I always put a lot of thought into my underpaintings whenever I'm doing a colored underpainting. I really put a lot of thought into the mood that I want the painting to emit. For this lion, I was feeling red. So I was like, I really want to do an orangey based red, a warm based red. In this painting in particular, I used cadmium red. I'm almost always a fan of bright colors. Very unconventional colors, non-local colors. If you've seen my other paintings, you can totally see this. I always stray away from natural colors and I just love a pop of something unexpected. So you can see that I'm just about done roughly adding in the values. I've worked my way up to the whitest white and now it's still looking pretty sketchy and that's good. I don't want it to be super detailed at this point. What I always do is I start with the values first and then I go in and refine. So now I've zoomed in a little bit so that you can see. I'm really getting in here with the details now. I've got my super, super tiny brush out and I'm just refining the details. And I'm still kind of going off of my lights and darks but I'm just kind of polishing everything off. And I'm at this point trying to get it, I'm starting to try to get it to look like a finished piece once I finish the underpainting. So this is where the fine lines are starting to develop. So 
So at this point, I'm still working in my values. In the first part, I was using a larger brush, so I was more shading and filling in, blocking in colors. At this point, I've got my finer tip brush out, so I'm almost completely working in lines at this point. I'm drawing in very fine lines and building value with lines. So now I'm going back in with that really intense pure red and I'm really bringing out the vibrancy of the red because I've kind of lost a lot of it when I went in the highlights. So I'm going over it again to bring that out so that we can put more emphasis on it because the undertone of this painting is red. We want that to show through. So I really want to make it a strong red undertone for the underpainting so that when I paint over it later, we don't lose almost all of the red in the color. And by color, of course, I mean the overpainting, which is the second layer after I finish the underpainting. So now I'm going back in with my pure white and I'm laying down more intense highlights. I'm adding in some shorter brush strokes for the shorter hair and the fur on the face and around the mane. And now you can see I'm really adding in super fine details now with my super, super thin tipped brush with white. I'm really bringing out the individual hairs of the mane. So at this point, I'm really finishing up my underpainting and I really do tend to spend the most time in the detail stages. I really do want to get as much detail in as possible before I go in with my second layer of colors. So now I'm adding in the whiskers and I'm going in with just a pure white to add in the whiskers. It's always so interesting to me how small details can bring everything together when it comes to painting. Like whenever I'm painting a furry animal with whiskers, before I put the whiskers on, there's always something missing and I can never really put my finger on it. And then I add the whiskers in and then I'm like, oh my gosh, wow, this just all came together. So now I'm going back in with some black because I've covered up a lot of the black that I had originally laid down and I'm going in just adding some more depth, higher contrast, really adding in some fine details with black this time. 
So now you can see that I'm finished with the underpainting and we're ready to move on to the second layer of colors, which I will show you in part two. 